Hey there folks and friends, Connecting Dots here. It's Fukushima Day 1181. So I need to go back in time for a moment uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, just to let you know uh, a few videos, topics that I've talked about and to connect the dots to let you know that again, I'm dead right about this concern on strontium-90. So I am, it all began here on January 18th. I talked about the Pacific tuna being uh, radioactive and um, how you're going to have to stop eating all the seafood in the Pacific Ocean. Now you may have noticed mainstream news here and some of the alternative sadly has uh, began their story on trying to say that seafood's okay. I'll remind everyone that my Fukushima Day 444 showed how 15 samples of bluefin tuna, not the albacore because they have different migration routes and you're not going to know which one you're eating unfortunately many of you aren't, um, how should I say, tuna fish wise so uh, regardless the point is that the 15 samples caught off the coast of California were 10 times more radioactive after only spending five months in the water in the Pacific Ocean after the meltdown and then they tested the yearlings the fish in 2012 off the coast of California again the bluefin tuna and this uh, report came back saying that all of the yearling, those are the fish are all just there for a year, were equally, equally as radioactive as their elder counterparts. So we have an ongoing crisis here. And then I talked about how the U.S. seafood had been rejected and how the raised acceptable levels of radiation um, had been put on to the U.S. citizens, unfortunately. So that's why if you're a U.S. citizen, you may want to watch this one. Now, <clears throat> I really got into this here on this, um, when the Swiss... Uh, um, embassy in uh, Japan posted these uh, this information about the meltdown at Fukushima. Now, I'll get into that image in a second, but uh, at that point I came out telling everyone, okay, my real concern here is the strontium-90 that we're going to have to begin that countdown because it's going to come and that was on uh, January 21st. Lo and behold, very shortly after I made the video, well, sure enough, we had the fourth story, uh, another story coming out on February 1st. As you can see here, I was uh, throwing that, uh, that information together uh, to let you all know that, hey folks, we got increasing levels of strontium-90. And that is the big concern here at Fukushima. And sure enough, the latest headline shows that, yes, watch out, strontium-90 is coming, folks, in massive amounts. So this is fresh off the press here, June 3rd, 2014. Strontium reaches 500 billion becquerels per square meter in basements at Fukushima. Record levels reported at five locations near the ocean. The U.S. senior scientist says we see strontium becoming more of a concern. The food chain will have to be studied study more carefully. Folks, we don't have time to study. We all know what's going to happen here. Anyone who's done their you know, knows anything about bioaccumulation and how radiation is just uh, bioaccumulating in all of the seafood here. We have a big problem here and it's not going away. They're talking about 40 years before it's uh, contained. I highly doubt they'll have it done in 40 years. As you, I, I'll get into that in a few moments here, but let's stick on, stick with what's going on. So they're saying here that uh, TEPCO plans to, uh, to begin test operation of the improved SARE system, that's the water filtration system, at the end of August. And um, because they have highly radioactive water that's accumulating in the basements of number one to four reactor buildings with strontium levels standing at 40 million to 500 million becquerels per liter. Heck yes, uh, we have a problem here, folks. Now, uh, PBS had put a story out here on August 9, 2013, that there was 30 times more strontium 90 than cesium at Fukushima. And strontium is much more dangerous. This is a problem. I, I hope many of you have gotten this um, figured out. And if not, well, you will figure it out shortly because um, this, um, I showed this video back when I was warning of this countdown that was taking place. That was around uh, uh, the thousand day mark. Uh, if you may have seen that uh, on my video, it was day thousand forty or sixty. I think I talked about this. Regardless, it says here that after core meltdown accident, and by the way, this is regarding a study, a German mock. Uh, a study on a Fukushima type of meltdown. It says that after a core meltdown accident, it cannot be completely ruled out that the melt will reach and partially penetrate the concrete foundation. I think if you saw the images here uh, from uh, the embassy, it's quite clear we have gone through the, <laughs> the concrete way beyond that. The images that they published, the Swiss embassy uh, in Japan, was that uh, the uh, 
the whole core had melted right through the five foot concrete floor through the basement and was now contaminating the water uh, the groundwater that was flowing below so yes we have a major major problem and it has yet to reach our shores but trust me it's coming and it's going to be much worse okay so the German study goes on to say that a core meltdown accident could well cause the melt to penetrate into the reactor foundation and pass through it down to the bottom side of the foundation within five days even if the passing groundwater were to prevent complete melt through there's there would still be a direct contact of the groundwater with the resolidified melt surface through the fissures the cracks etc which could cause the fission products to be leached this is what's going on folks here I'll show you the headlines well I've already seen the headlines what I'm talk about and the past headlines show that we have an ongoing meltdown here and what was really concerned is that the highest radionuclide concentration concentration of about 10 million 10 billion becquerels per square meter is reached by strontium 90 after some 5,000 days that's what this charts all about well th the only problem is we're only at uh, what a, a day 1181 5,000 days away can you see why I'm concerned about this the whole Pacific Ocean is toast folks you know we have many uh, I should say we have a few professors and unfortunately they've downplayed me and I'm not going to get into their specific names but yes even the professor here who's the California professor who's saying that the you know we have an ongoing Fukushima radiation release here and it's uh, unprecedented events with global consequences and the fallout is far from over you go on to read the article and they're they're the same fellows that were downplaying the uh, radiation in the seafood in the Pacific Ocean what the heck's going on here on one hand they're saying a major release a serious threat to our ocean and environment but yet on the other hand no no it's alright so far the seafood is good stay away from the seafood here folks this there is a senior scientist here again who, who did repeat what was mentioned before that there was a hundred times more strontium than cesium so a hundred or thirty times regardless the point is there's a lot more c uh, strontium that's coming our way here because we have an ongoing meltdown at three reactors C three destroyed nuclear reactors this is far from over and their whole process you know it's all about this water the thousand tons thousand tons of groundwater coming in daily it's going right by the plant so everything is getting contaminated and it's leaching into the ocean so I don't even trust the numbers here they say 300 tons of contaminated water flows into the ocean every day honestly it could be 600 tons or 800 tons I think I've made that quite clear in past videos and I'm not going to get back into that because this strontium 90 and this idea that they're going to freeze the ground because this is what their plan is here you may have noticed those pipes here these red pipes here is what they're going to freeze the ground all around the reactor uh, I'll show you the articles here and a few more pictures so uh, this is not at Fukushima this is one of the companies that does this type of work this is at another construction plant they needed to freeze the ground and basically you can see the heads of all these pipes here and these pipes basically run a coolant all the way down into the ground and it uh, freezes down while at Fukushima they're going down 95 feet yeah 95 feet now but there's concerns here that part of the ground to sink beneath Fukushima reactors from the ice wall being built the biggest fear here is the ground is a ground sinkage and the buildings being destabilized well they already have a big problem here w regarding the explosion and apparently there's cracks I've talked about reactor number four in past videos how that buildings all cracked the heck and then we have TEPCO saying oh yeah it'll sink up to 16 mils you know but don't worry about it folks it's all right you know I, I can't believe it yeah people have lost their confidence in TEPCO and I think we've also lost confidence in the government here as I've mentioned I've asked folks here to send um, a request here to do the Canadian Food Inspection Agency if you go watch my past videos in the, in the beginning you'll see them here I've talked about how we need to have our government testing the seafood on the west coast it's that simple uh, you know really uh, they're concerned about this they know that this may tip or may there will be shrinking of the ground as everything freezes and you know numerous ha hazards could undermine the plant and it's still being studied like seriously 
they're going ahead with this. They've already broken the ground, see, on June 2nd, they started this project, they're going to run these 1,500 pipes here, it's over a mile around, I'll show you that picture in a second here, and they're going 30 meters deep, uh, a meter is 3 feet times 30 is over 90 feet deep, and uh, um, <coughs> basically what they're already doing right now, they've had these wells, dug um, 12 of these wells, I believe, and they're trying to capture the groundwater before it gets out to the ocean and pump it directly into the ocean so it doesn't go into the plant because remember none of this is frozen this is the future project but these wells have been dug here and I've just uh, um, read a report here how they had to close one of the wells because it got contaminated with tritium actually I'll show the uh, story here in a few minutes so basically they plan on freezing the ground here and trying to deal with this contamination but the problem is there's holes that the plants are leaking the reactors are cracked that there's nuclear fission taking uh, going on below the ground what's going to happen I'm not sure I think their attempt is to try and slow the fission down by actually freezing the entire ground around the plant I know it sounds a little absurd but honestly this is what nuclear fission needs is cold so I think that's part of the process here They're, they may not be talking about that but they know you know that this like the Swiss showed here in that image that the the, the core has melted down so there is no con decontamination of these plants in many of the cases um, yeah we have a big problem here so as I was saying here just going back May 28 uh, they were starting to pump the water from those 12 wells I was talking about and uh, one of them well uh, it turned out it was uh, contaminated with tritium high levels of tritium so they had to stop the pumping so they they definitely they're concerned here folks that uh, you know they've seen the study the German study they know that there's going to be major levels of strontium coming out so they have to deal with this somehow Okay, so uh, tritium, if you're wondering, is something you should be worried about, obviously. Uh, this is from Can a leading Canadian uh, nuclear expert, uh, Dr. Gordon Edwards. And uh, well, hit the space bar if you want to read it, and I'll leave the links down below. I've got to move on here because strontium-90 is my real big concern here, and it has a half-life of 28.79 multiplied by 10. That means about in 280 years, it's 100% gone. Um, folks... Uh, with that German study, uh, I, I can't believe there's not more f more uh, YouTubers talking about this because this is my big concern and I think uh, levels will continue rising here. There's no doubt about that and at some point people are going to say, hold on a second, it's a product of nuclear fission. If it's it's continuing to rise, then what's going on, you know? Uh, hopefully the, the strontium-90 is what's going to bring a lot of people out here because, you know, cesium did wake up a lot of people, but the fact that we're having... Um, uh, we're going to have massive levels of strontium pumping out of that plant we should definitely start waking up people and uh, as it says here is potentially the most dangerous component of a radioactive fallout from a nuclear plant hello wake up it's time to get on board okay so as I mentioned here I've been trying to uh, raise some money here so I can um, buy a type of uh, uh, either a liquid oscillator or something like that so I can read the radiation here on the West Coast. More specifically, I want to be able to identify strontium-90, of course. So I'll be, uh, I'm looking for donations. If you can't help out, that's fine. Please uh, at least send a, a request here to, to the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, okay? Okay, so I'll leave the link down below and if, if you, you know, would like to send them, uh, a request uh, everything's there you don't have to live in Canada by the way you can live anywhere in the world and just ask them uh, politely if they could uh, please start uh, checking the uh, levels of radiation of the seafood caught on the west coast you know um, I, I've talked about here uh, Woods Hole Institute that's asking people to send $600 donations for a kit so they could test the waters off the coast of Canada and US that's nonsense. You can have that type of radiation tested for about $45, $50. So that, that's a pure scam. So stay away from that and instead call the uh, Canadian Food Inspection Agency. I'll leave the link down below here to this page and uh, let's get something done here together. Okay? And if you do want to send a donation, well, uh, I'll leave a link down below for the PayPal account or you can find the link at connectingdots1.com there's a thread there that I, s I started s saying to uh, help me uh, spread the truth and 
help me out by giving a donation. But if you can't afford it, hey, save your money and buy some silver. We're hitting a low here in uh, June 25th, 26th. You might want to load up the boat. But please at least send a request here, okay? Okay, take care, folks. Hope you enjoyed the update. Take care.